Next on the Broadway show, Broadway is back and so are the Tony Awards. We'll take you inside the theaters as we welcome back the biggest shows in Broadway history. Plus, we're bringing you the incredible stories of this year's top Tony nominees, including Danny Burstein and Elizabeth Stanley. And everything you need to know about this year's long-awaited Tony Awards. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. So glad you could be here for this absolutely stacked episode of The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Well, not only is Broadway back, but finally, so was Broadway's biggest night. The 74th Annual Tony Awards are live, Sunday on CBS and Paramount+. Plus. It's a celebration of the absolute biggest, the brightest, and the best of Broadway, and the COVID-shortened 2019-2020 season. The room will be electric, no doubt, with the big show guaranteed to be packed with more emotion than ever. It's the first ceremony since June of 2019, hosted by two Broadway greats, Tony winners Audra McDonald and Leslie Odom Jr. On this episode of The Broadway Show, we'll not only break down the biggest races, the who's who and the what's what, and all that jazz, but we're also going to bring you what we think are the most interesting stories from the top stars of this year's Tonys. But first, I gotta show you something. The big four are back. It took six years to get this on the first time. I'm so glad it didn't take six years to come back. Yeah. Thank you for getting vaccinated and wearing a mask and supporting my theater. They are the highest grossing musicals in Broadway history. Hamilton, Chicago, The Lion King, and Wicked. All now back on Broadway for the first time since March 2020. If you had the pleasure of being in one of those rooms where it happened, the energy was unlike anything you felt before. But almost impossibly, that emotion is nearly as palpable in these video clips. Let's talk Tonys and one of Broadway's best, Danny Burstein. This is his seventh Tony Award nomination, this time for playing the nightclub host in Moulin Rouge, the musical. He's not just an amazing actor, Danny is one of Broadway's truly great human beings. And while 2020 was tough for the entire theater industry, he was especially hard hit. Paul Wontorek is here with the story. Immediately after Moulin Rouge shut its doors in March 2020, Danny Burstein found himself battling COVID-19 during a harrowing hospital stay. After five days in the ER, he returned home to care for his wife, stunning Broadway soprano Rebecca Luker, who was rapidly declining from a public battle with ALS. Luker died days before Christmas, ending her inspiring, awareness-raising battle with the disease. Now, Danny is ready to return to the mad, mad world of Moulin Rouge with newfound love of his life on the stage. Danny, it's so good to see you. You know, I am excited Broadway's back, but I am thrilled that it's back with you, that you are back. And, and we're here in New York City, together. Here in New York City, we're doing this. Broadway's back, yeah. back in Moulin Rouge. What are the emotions right now? Oh, it's, it's huge. Overwhelming. It's, it is, it's overwhelming. I'm, I'm so excited. The cast is, about a third of our cast is new. And so they're bringing this great energy sure. to the company. And um, we're all incredibly excited. I just want to feel the audience there with us. And we, we want to play. You know, I, I like numbers, and I like looking at people's careers with numbers, and I don't know if you've done the math, but you are entering your 30th year yeah. as a Broadway performer. That's incredible, yeah. so you didn't realize that. Yeah, because uh, I'll show you my knees. Because <laughs> I've had four surgeries on my knees. I'm here uh, because this is all, all that I ever wanted to do. I'm very lucky, and I know how lucky I am. I never cared about being famous, I never cared about any of that stuff. I just wanted to do good work and have the respect of my peers, but also to have a varied, a varied kind of career. I never wanted to repeat myself. And so after South Pacific, mm -hmm. I got all these offers to do kind of New York wheeler dealer uh -huh. kind of guys. And, and then after uh, Drowsy Chaperone, these kind of Latin lovery kind of guys <laughs> and, and Fiddler on the Roof, every Jew in the world was offered <laughs> to me. And I thought, you know, I just don't want to do that. I did that already. So when uh, Moulin Rouge came around, uh, Alex met me at a, at a diner on 72nd Street in Broadway and he shoved the script in my hand and he said, meet me here in a week, read that over, let me know what you think. It was unlike anything I'd ever done before. The Moulin Rouge is a state of mind. Was it always a given that 
you would be back on that stage when Moulin Rouge started again? Did yeah, you? you know, I didn't have to return if I didn't want to, but I desperately wanted to. I wanted to see Broadway up and running again. I wanted to uh, be there for my company. I wanted to be there for the theater community. I felt it was important to me. Here we are in Times Square. Didn't you actually like, go to high school? Like down, I did, down right there. down that block, 46th right? Street, the, the high school of performing school. arts. Yes, high school of performing arts. I was, I was an extra in the film. So you would probably walk through here after school. Oh and, yeah, like walk through Times oh, Square. Oh, it was, it was seedy as hell. <laughs> there were this, this whole street behind us was all, all porn theaters. You know, hot girls. You know, girls, girls, girls. And it was a, a fascinating place to grow up, uh, but I loved it. What was that kid like, that kid that attended high school for the performing arts? Obviously, he was on a path to be doing the performing arts, and, yeah. and here you are, seven-time Tony nominee. I was, I was the quiet, shy one. I was the quiet one in a school full of extroverts. I've gotten together with my high school uh, classmates, and they were like, I kind of remember you, <laughs> you know? but. I didn't, I was quiet, I really was, and I just, but I felt like, you know, quiet fire, you know, and that I was just waiting for the right time to blossom. I wanted to learn from all the older actors, and, yeah. and, and I did, and the most important thing I learned was about being in the moment and listening, and that got me through uh, my long runs on Broadway. There was such an outpouring of love when, when Rebecca passed last December. What is it like navigating that? I mean, you know, you're a good guy, but you, you, you've said it, you were married to an angel. It's wonderful to have been uh, married to Rebecca Luker, <laughs> it is. Um, and the thing that's gotten me through is that gratitude, yeah. that, that love. And now people come to me and they're, you know, they don't know what to say and they just give me a hug. It's very funny. You wind up taking care of them in a way in, the, sure. in those moments. Yeah. But it's beautiful because, you know, it all comes from a, a place of love. They sent notes, they sent flowers, they sent dinner one yeah. night and, you know, that kind of thing. And they showed up. And that kind of thing is uh, very, very meaningful. It was meaningful to her, of course, and meaningful to me, and it, and it keeps me going. By my count, you went to eight Tony Award ceremonies with, with Becca, where you were, one of you was a nominee. Uh -huh. What were those nights like for, for the two of you? There is nothing bad about being nominated for a Tony sure. Award. There's nothing bad about it. It's just a lot of fun. And you know it's be, you're being kind of extravagant, and and our, our dear friend Milan Breton is designing our, our clothing, you know, and, and we always, uh, you know, stuffed our pockets with food and snacks because you night. have to wait there forever. <laughs> yeah. You're sitting in your seats for close to five hours. Yeah. So we did that and we had a lot of fun and we would actually, you know, throw food around to the people around us. You know, it, it, was, uh, it was always a great time and always uh, you know, wonderful to have her on my arm or me on her arm. We just had a blast every single time. And this year, my son Alex is coming with me. We've had this conversation many times over the years because I, I assumed you would have a, a mantle full of Tonys by now. Uh, but you have been nominated seven. This is your seventh. Yeah. That's a big number. It is a big uh, number. There's only one person with one uh, more because people keep telling me. Yeah. <laughs> Jason Robarts, he has people. eight. People keep reminding you yes, of this. I know, Susan Lucci, I've heard it all. Stop, I've heard it all. Does it change meaning for you? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure the first time it was just like electrifying. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know what? It's just this lovely pat on the back from the community, yeah. letting you know that, you know, that uh, you're continuing to do uh, work that is respected and that you're loved. And that means a lot. That means a lot, yeah, because you know, that kid on 46th Street, in a weird way, got all that he ever wanted. All eyes are definitely going to be on Danny come Tony night. Paul, real quick, Moulin Rouge is sure to be one of the most honored shows at the Tonys, but it's not the most nominated. Right, Tamsin. The most nominated show of this year's Tonys is Jagged Little Pill, the acclaimed rock musical that brings the popular hits of Alanis Morissette to the Broadway stage. <laughs> 
It walks into Tony Night with 15 nominations in total, including all six of its stars. Though I should say the lavish adaptation of Baz Luhrmann's film Moulin Rouge is right behind it with 14 nominations. Those two hits will go head-to-head -head in the best musical race, with some serious competition from Tina, the Tina Turner musical, which brings the inspiring story of the music icon to life on stage, and features a dazzling centerpiece performance by rising Broadway talent and Tony frontrunner Adrian Warren. You're going to hear from Adrian in just a second. The Broadway shutdown stopped the 2019-2020 season short by almost two months, so a lot of Tony hopefuls didn't open in time for consideration in this year's races. The reduced list of eligible shows affected some of the categories in interesting ways. Moulin Rouge leading man Aaron Tveit is the sole nominee in the Best Actor in a Musical category, which means he needs to be selected by 60% of voters to win a trophy. Also interesting is the Best Original Score category, which is typically won by a musical. Instead, there are five plays hoping for a win. Let's send it back to you, Tamsin. So we've all had ups and downs, tragedies and triumphs over the past year and a half, but Elizabeth Stanley has had some seriously huge and positive life changes. She got engaged just a few weeks before COVID, just gave birth to her first child, and this weekend she could add a Tony to her mantle. One month ago, your daughter was born. So what has that been like? Because you, you were pregnant through the pandemic that mo most of us were just you know trying to get around, but, but that was a lot to take on and you did. <laughs> Well, I don't know any other way, so, yes. you know. Um, I mean, in some ways, I, even my doctor said that she's like, I actually think it's a great time to be pregnant because you kind of want to stay in and like nest and do all the things, and I was already doing that anyway. And a friend of mine I talked to, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, she's like, you seem really like settled into like the mom pace. And I was like, oh, I think it, the pandemic pace is sort of the mom pace, so it actually gave me something to do. Well, <laughs> congratulations to you. I know last time Thank I saw you. you, you had just gotten engaged actually before the pandemic, right? Yes. So we're waiting for the marriage. We're waiting. We just yeah. had the baby out of wedlock. We just did it. You know, <laughs> hey, I'm breaking rules. There's no rules anymore. There's no rules. Yeah, we decided to wait. Now we have a built-in flower girl, you know, um, for when we do it. We, we just, because for us, the wedding felt like we wanted that celebration of our people coming together. And I don't know, it's, as, as everyone who's trying to plan a major event has figured out, Broadway included, like it's so hard. And, and we felt like, let's just wait till it's simpler. Sitting here, seeing b new billboards go up, which is really, really exciting because yes. was a, this was a really dead space for a oh, long time. God. It's exciting to see things back. So what are your plans with regard to Jagged? And then of course, I want to talk about your awards and nominations. Um, so with Jagged, I am taking a little bit of time off, um, which was such a hard decision because we've been waiting so long to come back. And now, especially that like these last few weeks, you know, everyone's in rehearsals and things are opening right. and I'm like, oh, I can't believe I'm not doing that. Um, but then, you know, I look at my daughter and I'm like, you know, I'm not ready to do that yet. So the show's been really wonderful. Um, they've cast Heidi Blickenstaff to fill in for me. And so she'll be opening the show. And then, so she and I will be kind of sharing the role throughout the winter. Um, and then come January, I'll, I'll basically be back. And let's talk about the upcoming Tonys. Oh my gosh. I can't believe they're actually happening. I know. Woo! I know. Finally. <laughs> I know. Finally. It's it's weird to say Broadway is back, but it's so exciting and I feel like we keep repeating ourselves, but the truth of the matter is is that we've just been waiting a long time. We didn't know what it was going to look like and it feels like it looks pretty normal. Yeah. Yeah, it it feels like I, right now I feel like it feels like a warm blanket. You know, it's like a hug of like this, oh right, this this old thing that I love and all these people and you know, so they're going to be unique Tonys. No, no doubt. Of course. <laughs> of course. Um, but I just, I can't wait to see people and to celebrate. Tony's, normally you'd be looking for the dress, getting the makeup ready, figuring out the style. As a new mom, has that cha has it changed your uh, yes. your Tony preps? <laughs> normally I'm like obsessed with like the look and all that because it's so fun. But um, yeah, I haven't even tried dresses on, so I'm not even doing that until like Thursday of next week, which is just days before the Tony. <laughs> so if I show up in a paper bag, that's why. No, I've been like preparing like, pumping and prepping and setting up the like game plan of the day and like um, some grandparents are coming in to like good. babysit so good hopefully it'll you know I'll be fine and my baby will be happy for a few hours without me so it, I know <laughs> I'll be like in a dual frame of mind it's a three-person race in the best leading actress in a musical category Elizabeth Stanley going up against previous Tony winner Karen Olivo from Moulin Rouge and Adrian Warren, who's about to step back into the title role in Tina, the Tina Turner musical. Oh, 
I got a phone call from my manager. She said, will you go pick up this script? And I said, what is it? She's like, ah, just go pick up the script. I walked into the office. I grabbed the script and it said, Tina, the Teen Church Musical. And I just said, hmm? what? And I looked at them and I said, well, what would you like me to read for? The first time I met her was at the workshop. And I didn't look at her in the presentation until I got to Proud Mary because I thought, you know what? If this doesn't go any further, I wanna be able to one day tell my grandkids that I played Tina Turner in front of Tina Turner and she wasn't like repulsed by it. <laughs> and she was just singing along with me. And then I was like, nah, you cool. We, we're gonna, we're, we will be fine, we're gonna be fine. And at the end of the presentation, I was just bawling and I just fell to my knees and I just like, went like this in front of her. And she just held me and hugged me. I think the first thing I said was, um, was it tough for you to watch this? Cause it's a lot, it's deep. And she goes, no, you got the hard job now. I already did it. But she was not kidding. <laughs> there is still a lot more to talk about on this edition of the Broadway show. Coming up, it's playtime. We're talking about the Tony Awards' most provocative show, the record-breaking slave play heading into Tony night. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and you're watching The Broadway Show. You know, it's been a long, long year and a half without live theater, but we've been talking about it. Broadway is back, and so are the Tonys, live this weekend. But right now, let's talk plays, slave play the season's most provocative show, and it's up for a dozen Tony Awards this year. Charlie Cooper caught up with the Tony-nominated star of Slave Play, Joaquina Calacongo. Slave Play nominated for 12 Tony Awards. Did you know the, the gravity of how important this play was, or was it until after you guys kind of got on stage and heard from crowds and critics? Upon reading it, I knew that it was such a profound piece and incredibly moving and and something that need to be told at that time. But I honestly did not believe that Broadway was gonna put it up, to be very honest. <laughs> because it's some, like, we've never seen that on a Broadway stage. And so for our producers and for them to trust us to, to bring Jeremy's words to life and to give it the space to live and breathe in that community was really exciting. When the show first out, there were tons of people protesting it um, and lots of people who didn't necessarily feel comfortable um, with the show, um, is there a message you have for them now? I think that's the beauty of art. Not everybody is going to agree um, with everything that's produced. Their art is subjective. I think the nominations speak for itself. Clearly somebody liked it. Let's send it back to Paul with a look at the nominees in the Best Play category. Thanks, Tamsin. Slave Play broke records with its 12 nominations, the most ever given to a play. But let's talk about the rest of the best. Joining it in the best play race are The Inheritance, which received 11 nods, including the third for 90-year-old Broadway acting legend Lois Smith, the family dramedy Grand Horizons, The Sound Inside, starring past winner and current nominee Mary Louise Parker, and the pair of one-man plays titled Seawall A Life. That one also earned Best Actor in a Play nominations for its leads, Jake Gyllenhaal and Tom Sturridge. I've got some more interesting tidbits to talk about coming up in just a few, including what is probably our most star-studded category. Back to you, Tamsin. Thanks, Paul. We'll see you then. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. Chicago is back on Broadway, and so is one of the most iconic numbers in musical theater history. The cameras were there to watch a return of all that jazz. And once again, another truly emotional curtain call for the longest running American musical in Broadway history, the Tony Award winner for Best Revival of a Musical. But let's get back to this year's Tonys, live this weekend on Paramount Plus and CBS, and this year's most star-studded category. Hey there, Paul. Thanks, Tamsin. Interesting note about that Chicago win that you mentioned. The best revival of a musical category was eliminated this year. But I will say, three strong contenders fill the play revival race. First, The Sexy Betrayal, which also earned Tom Hiddleston, aka Loki, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a Best Actor nomination. Then there's the romantic Frankie and Johnny in the Claire de Lune, which landed six-time past winner and one of this year's hosts, Audrey McDonald, her ninth nomination. There's also the stirring Broadway premiere of the classic A Soldier's Play. For that acclaimed staging, favorites Blair Underwood and David Allen Greer were both nominated in acting races. One more time, the Tonys are this weekend. The awards ceremony on Paramount Plus, followed by a two-hour concert event 
celebrating the return of Broadway on CBS. And I can't wait. Back to you, Tamsin. Thank you, Paul, and you're so right. Life feels just a little bit better knowing that live theater is back, and so is Broadway's biggest night. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. And that's going to do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. We'll see you next week.